news was coming so fast and, and so rapid and it was changing. I remember thinking at the time, is this the right thing to do? People are starting to get sick. I mean, we were in full panic. It's pretty extreme what we did and what we went through. I really started to doubt that we got this. I guess it was around March 9th when it all started getting so real and people started talking about working at home and we're learning more and more about the virus. Every day that progressed into the next day in that month of March, things started to get more serious and things started to change and things started to get a bit scarier and real. What's gonna happen when it gets to Pennsylvania? What's gonna happen when it gets to the Delaware and Lehigh Valleys? What are we going to do to keep people informed? Because it was just starting to send panic. More fears, more concerns, more questions, I guess, than we had answers. We started talking before that week about what things were gonna look like and how we were going to do this. I remember lots of meetings, seeing a lot of our managers behind closed doors talking about the what ifs, the what to do's, trying to be proactive. Our managers were talking about, are we gonna send people home? What are we going to do to keep our own employees safe? What's our plan here in our building? Are we going to be able to stay on the air? But we knew we were going to stay on the air some way, somehow. And those plans began to take shape of who's going to stay in the building and who's going to go home. And I couldn't imagine working from home. I mean, even as other people started doing it, I work on the morning show, we're on the air. I'm on the air almost constantly for five hours a day. How do you do that from home? How do you do the news for five hours in your kitchen? I remember sitting in the office and thinking, how am I gonna do weather at home? Um, it is something that's really never been done before, especially without a production team. The first day when I was at home, woke everybody up in the house one by one. I mean, we were in full panic, rebooting them. The Wi-Fi's going in and out one by one. We're rebooting the computers, rebooting the Wi-Fi. I walked out the door, not knowing when I would be returning and set up actually my home studio by myself. Um, I did get a laptop from work, but I bought my own light. I used my own cell phone to go live on the air, used ear pods to, for communication of hearing the producer back at the station and also using it as a microphone and created my own studio in a bedroom basement a cold bedroom basement. I did it all with my son's phone, which I didn't even really know how to use because his phone was better than my phone. <laughs> so that's what I talked into for five hours a day, my son's phone, hoping he didn't get a call, which he shouldn't have that early in the morning. As we started sending more and more people home, the work here became greater and greater. We were doing press conference after press conference after press conference every day to make sure that we were putting on the very latest information and the very latest guidance, which was always changing. The few of us who remained in the building and kept working from the studio, we would check on our colleagues at home. It was just a time that we never experienced. It was a first for everyone, even the journalists. The word we began to use at work was together. We kept saying to each other, we're in this together. And then we began to communicate that message to our viewers that we're going to get through this together because it really was scary. The news really was heavy. There were so many questions. There was so much we didn't know. I'm in the studio with David Murphy, that's it. And we're doing the news and Tam is at home and Karen is at home and Matt Pellman is at home and it's just weird. I, I've worked many holidays. Anyone who works in the news business does or has. And there's just no one there in the studio. And there's no one there in the newsroom. And it's just desolate. And I really got that same feeling going into the studios at 6ABC every day. Except it felt like it was five times a holiday in terms of the amount of 
nothingness, you know, it's, there was just no one in there. It was weird. It was weird walking into work on a Monday morning or a Tuesday morning or a Wednesday and normally there's people bustling around, even in the early hours, we have, we have tons of people in, in the station. And you'd walk in and it's like, it's a ghost town. It's something I've never gotten used to. But when I really think about that march and the beginning of all this, um, you know, work is certainly an issue, but as a mother, all I think about is my family. And I felt like I was just trying to manage everybody's emotions. I was so worried about the kids and how they were coping with this. I can't imagine, and I always say this, how parents do it with little ones. It must be so much harder. But even having older kids, I just worried for them and how they're coping. And if they're able to connect with friends, if they're still able to learn in these circumstances. And my daughter is a type 1 diabetic, so she's in the high-risk group. And trying to understand what that really meant was difficult for all of us. Trying to reassure her, even though we were scared ourselves. It got really draining, you know, after months of being in this pattern of not being able to go places, having to consistently wear a mask. You're worried about your own health. Are you going to get coronavirus? Are any of your family members going to get it? And slowly, right, you began to know people personally who did get diagnosed, who did get infected. And then all of us, now we know someone who didn't survive from coronavirus. And my biggest concern was, what if I got someone sick? Uh, I remember the very next week on Monday, my son, three at the time had a cold and I was catching it and I was devastated and embarrassed and I didn't know what to do. Um, I knew I was needed greatly in the newsroom and how would I do what I needed to do um, to help support everybody if I was the f one of the first ones to go down. Um, and so I remember coming into the newsroom and just locking myself in my office um, and just said, everybody, call me, text me, I'm here, email me, whatever you need. But I just, I just couldn't live with myself if I was the person that infected someone else. Another thing that happens even now, a year later, is I have these really strange dreams. Some of them are, are nightmarish and you never remember them completely when you wake up. But I kind of remember the context of these dreams and it's always this sense that this is never gonna end. And you're in this spiral that has no end point. And it's like you're stuck. And I would wake up and I'd look out the window and I'd try to remember the dream, and again, I, I wouldn't be able to. But I'd look out the window and I'd say, you know what? The real world is just like this dream. We don't know when this is going to stop. We don't know when this is going to end. And it was a sheer frustration to know that there's nothing I can do. But a year later, I mean, there's hope. There really is. The vaccines that are available and the promise that every American have the opportunity to get it, we will just continue to press on and uh, cover this pandemic because it's not over. I look back now, I don't think I thought about it then, just how incredible uh, technology has become uh, to allow us to not miss a beat in the industry that we are in during the important times that we were in that we got the information to the viewer without any fail the first thing that i'm going to do when this pandemic is finito done over and i don't know if they're going to like this but i'm going to give tam a hug 
and David a hug, and Karen a hug, and Matt Palman a hug. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful things will get back to some new normal. And we are just really looking forward to getting back to normal and having a regular life. You know, quite the journey with my colleagues and the people here in this community. Um, people just hoping that at some point we can get back to doing some of the things that we enjoyed and that we liked, but quite frankly, some of those things we used to do, maybe we need to leave those behind as well. I think we'll all remember this year and take it with us as we go forward.